Wing Men Out Players. This is Nanny Susanny, and it's bedtime reading. And we're talking about the animal kingdom again. And remember last night, I said that today, we're not just gonna learn about an animal, an animal, but we're gonna have a story about an animal. And it's like five pages long. So we better get started. It's called, How the Rhinoceros Got His Skin. So see this funny looking rhinoceros? They're not so funny in person. They're kind of big and scary. Ooh. So this is a really nice story though. So it says once upon a time, a long, long time ago on an island in the middle of the Red Sea. The Red Sea, doesn't that sound familiar? Well, you probably remember the story in the Bible about Moses and the children of Israel and they were leaving Egypt and they arrived at the Red Sea and they needed to cross it and they had nowhere to go because the Egyptians were chasing after them. So Moses lifted up both his arms and he called on God and what did God do? He parted the Red Sea and then they could all cross. Well, this is where this story happened and this island is in the Red Sea. Fascinating. So, it says, there lived a man from India. This man lived all alone on the island with nothing but a knife, a magical cook stove, and a brimless red hat. See, he's wearing a brimless red hat. One fine day, the Indian mixed up cake flour, currants, plums, and sugar. That sounds wonderful. The cake pan measured two feet across and stood three feet high. It's a big one. Then he put it in his cook stove and watched it bake. Soon it was golden brown and smelled like nothing he had ever smelled before. Mm hmm. Let's see what he made. Just as he was about to cut the cake, a huge rhinoceros came lumbering down the beach, drawn by the smell of the cake. No doubt, the rhinoceros, with no manners at all, stopped right in front of the cook stove with the delicious smelling plum cake on top of it. And he didn't say so much as a simple hello to the Indian. The Indian stared at the enormous beast. In those days, the rhinoceros skin fit him very tightly which made him look as big as a house and twice as scary. He had two piggy eyes and a big horn on his nose that made him even more frightening. I want that cake, said the rhinoceros to the Indian. And with that, the Indian forgot all about his delicious smelling cake and he climbed as fast as he could with his legs that his legs could carry him right up the nearest palm tree. Good, said the rhinoceros, thinking the cake was all his. With that, the rhinoceros kicked over the stove with his big foot, which set the plum cake rolling on the sand. Then he spiked it. But he spiked the cake on the horn of his nose and slurped and gobbled it down as fast as he could. <gasps> Delicious, he said, looking up at the Indian. Then he went away, waving his tail behind him. <gasps> Look at that. See that? Okay, we're gonna read over here now. As soon as the rhinoceros disappeared, the Indian climbed down from the tree. He was mad. As mad as a hornet, he stomped around the empty cook stove and muttered over and over, them that takes cakes, which the island man makes, bakes, makes dreadful mistakes. And he shook his fist after that rude and mannerless rhinoceros and vowed to get even over here. Now, as it happened, there was a heat wave in the Red Sea. A few weeks later, the Indian sat down by the sea and removed his red hat to cool off. Soon, 
along came the very same giant rhinoceros that had eaten the Indian's plum cake. The rhinoceros looked at the Indian, but said nothing about eating the cake. The rhinoceros had no manners at all. Then, without even a, how do you do, the rhinoceros took off his skin and dove into the Red Sea. He waddled straight into the middle of the sea, then blew bubbles through his nose. That sounds like Alphaeus. Don't you blow bubbles through your nose when you're in the bath? I think so. Over here, see? Okay, we're gonna read over here. All the while, the Indian sat on the shore and watched the rhinoceros, but said nothing. Suddenly, he smiled a smile that ran all around his face two times. He ran back to camp as fast as his legs would go and swept up as many crumb cakes as he could find. The Indian never ate anything but cake, and since he never cleaned his campsite, it was full of crumb cakes. Carrying the crumbs in a sack, he ran back to the shore of the Red Sea and filled the rhinoceros' skin with all the as many crumbs as it would hold. Then he left it on the shore. What fun, he thought, climbing up a palm tree to wait. No sooner had the Indian climbed up the palm tree when the rhinoceros waded out of the water. He shook himself once, just like Hunter does when he gets all wet, then slips back into his skin. Suddenly, that skin, which had always fit so snugly and comfortably, tickled like cracker crumbs in bed. I remember somebody who left cracker crumbs in my bed. Little Winry, when she'd come in bed with Grampy and Nanny and watch TV and eat crackers like fish crackers. There'd be crumbs in Nanny's bed. The rhinoceros twitched and wiggled and wiggled and twitched. Those crumbs tickled in something terrible. He ran to a palm tree and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. Soon he had rubbed so much that he rubbed his skin into a great fold over his shoulders and another one underneath. The longer he rubbed, the more folds appeared. There were folds over his belly, folds over his legs, and folds all over his back. Kind of sounding like what Nanny's starting to look like. And the more he rubbed, the more irritated he got. But it made no difference. So he went home very angry indeed and horribly scratchy. And from that day to this, every rhinoceros has great folds of skin and a very bad temper. <laughs> Serves him right. So some fun facts about the rhinoceros that I thought I'd share. Just a few facts. You know the nose horn that he has? Well, do you know what rhinoceros means? Rhinoceros means nose horn. And do you know how tall they can grow? They can grow as tall as daddy. And do you know how many men in weight would equal the weight of a rhinoceros? was like 2,500 kilograms, which is way over 5,000 pounds. About 30 men. <gasps> That's like 30 grandpas or 30 grampies would equal the weight of a rhinoceros. Do you know what they love to eat? Maybe crumb cakes, but they really like to eat grass and plants. So it's kind of a good thing that that rhinoceros didn't decide to climb up that tree and eat that palm tree with the man in it because he'd be in real trouble. And do you know what a mama rhinoceros is called? She's called a cow. So after this video, you can ask mommy to show you a video about a mummy rhinoceros with her baby since it's Mother's Day. That'd be a sweet video to watch and see how a baby like Monty, when Monty starts walking around stuff, you'll see it'd be just like this rhinoceros. And 
it's mummy. So, I'm glad you're at the ranch. This is so fun. And you're there for a couple days. But I wanted to tell you that when you get back home, you know what we're going to start doing? We could do it every day if you want, or every second day, or a couple times a week. But Nanny has these cards that she made up that we're going to start learning stuff. So, for Alphaeus, I have a series of cards that are like ladybugs. So, we're going to learn counting. One ladybug. Two ladybugs, three ladybugs, four ladybugs, and we're going to go all the way to 20. So we're going to learn how to count. And we're also, Alphaeus, we're going to learn uh, colors. So this is like red and green and yellow and blue. And then we're going to learn about shapes. So like a circle or a cross or a triangle, or a square. And Winry, we're gonna learn, oh, another thing that Alphaeus can learn is numbers. We've got numbers, but we go all the way, like, oh, Nanny did so many of these. See this whole pile? Well, it goes all the way to 100, so, uh, Alphaeus can learn a certain amount of numbers, and so can Winry. And Winry, man, he's got some interesting stuff. So we're going to learn English and French. So, like, here I have the moon, la lune, the sun, le soleil. And I have it also in fruits and vegetables, so like apple. Une pomme. Banana. Une banane. And tomato. Une tomate. This is fun. And then I also have some that are like this. So this is a bee. I don't have it in English, but I can teach you in French. Une abeille. Une bicyclette. Un cadeau. Un dinosaure. So we're going to learn some French. So isn't that so much fun? So let Nanny check what's tomorrow night. Exciting. What's tomorrow night? Oh, you guys are going to love tomorrow night. So have fun at the ranch. Winry, thank you that you're going to be a great helper for Grammy and Grampy. And you're going to go help get, gather the eggs and maybe feed the cows and feed the horses and a face is going to help and maybe maybe Grammy is planting her garden right now. It might still be too cold but you never know and then you can help that way and, and you can help Grammy to take care of Monty so that mommy can get a really good rest because she needs her body to rest. She needs to get strengthened so let's pray. So, Lord, we pray tonight as Winry and Alphaeus and Monty, as they sleep at the ranch, that you give them sweet dreams. And I'm not sure where they're going to sleep, because usually Nanny says, like, Monty in his crib, and Alphaeus in the bottom bunk, and Winry in the top bunk. So wherever you're sleeping tonight, we just pray that God places his angels round about you, and those angels are going to watch over you tonight as you're sleeping, and that tomorrow you have a fun day and, and get outside and get all full of energy and you're going to see Grammy G as well, maybe, maybe from afar, but uh, you'll get to see her and uh, so you have lots of fun tomorrow and Nanny and Grampy and Uncle Michael and Nana and Opa and Mayor, we miss you all so very much and you know as Nanny usually does every night, here they come. So many nanny kisses for Alphaeus, for Winry, and for Monty. And we love you so very much. And I'll see you tomorrow.